Have you ever stopped to think about something so ordinary that you've never questioned it before? Like sugar? It's in our coffee, our cakes, our candies, and pretty much every processed food out there. It's one of those ingredients we use almost every day without giving it a second thought. But here's something strange when you actually think about it. Why is sugar white when sugarcane is brown? Sugarcane looks like bamboo, tall, tough, and greenish brown. But when you crush it, the juice that comes out isn't white at all, it's golden or brown. So how does that dark, sticky juice become those bright white crystals in your kitchen jar? Let's find out right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start from the very beginning with sugarcane itself. Sugarcane is basically nature's battery of sweetness. Inside its stalks is a sugary juice made mostly of sucrose, the compound that gives sugar its signature sweetness. But that juice isn't pure sucrose. It's also packed with plant fibers, minerals, waxes, and pigments. All those natural extras give it that brownish tint. So when sugarcane juice is first squeezed out, it looks nothing like the clean white sugar we know. It's more like a muddy syrup. But hidden inside that syrup are millions of colorless sugar molecules waiting to be freed. The process begins with crushing the sugar cane. In large mills, the stalks are fed through heavy steel rollers that squeeze out the juice. What's left behind is a fibrous pulp called bagasse, which isn't wasted, by the way. It's often burned as fuel or used to make paper and eco-friendly packaging. The extracted juice then goes through a cleaning phase. It's heated and treated with lime or carbon dioxide, which helps neutralize acids and makes impurities easier to remove. As the liquid heats up, the unwanted bits clump together and are filtered out. What's left is a clearer, lighter colored syrup that's ready for the next step but it's still far from the white sugar you see on your kitchen counter. Now comes the magic part, crystallization. The purified juice is boiled in large evaporators until it becomes thick and concentrated. As the water evaporates, sugar begins to crystallize out of the syrup. And here's the interesting part. Those crystals are not white at all. They're actually colorless. If you could look at a single grain under a microscope, you'd see it's transparent, like tiny glass. The reason it looks white is because light bounces and scatters between millions of these clear crystals, just like how snow looks white, even though individual snowflakes are clear ice. So sugar isn't truly white, it just appears white because of how light interacts with its structure. But at this stage, the crystals are still coated with a thin layer of molasses, that sticky dark syrup that gives raw sugar its brownish color and rich flavor. If you stop the refining process here, you get brown sugar. It still has molasses left on it, which is why it tastes deeper, almost caramel-like. To make white sugar, though, refiners take things a few steps further. The crystals are washed, filtered, and purified again, sometimes even using activated carbon to remove any trace of color or molasses. What's left are perfectly pure sucrose crystals, clear, clean, and light reflecting, which our eyes perceive as bright white. So no, sugar isn't dyed or bleached white. It's white because once you remove all the natural pigments and impurities, What's left is simply pure sucrose, colorless by nature. It's like polishing a gem. The more you remove, the more it shines. Now let's rewind a bit, because sugar hasn't always looked like this. For thousands of years, sugar wasn't the fine white powder we know today. In ancient India, Sugar cane was first cultivated and processed into crystallized sugar by boiling and drying the juice. From there, the knowledge spread to Persia, then to Europe through traders and explorers. Back then, sugar was a luxury. It came in dark, sticky chunks, 
more like modern brown sugar, and only the wealthy could afford it. Refining methods were crude, and the process was slow. It wasn't until the Industrial Revolution that sugar refining became a large-scale operation. Steam-powered mills and new filtering technologies made it possible to produce pure white sugar in massive quantities. And just like that, sugar transformed from a rare delicacy into an everyday kitchen staple. Ironically, white sugar used to be a status symbol, a sign of wealth and refinement. Today, it's the opposite. Brown sugar is often seen as the premium or more natural choice, even though it's just white sugar with some molasses added back in. Funny how history flips things around. Now, a lot of people think brown sugar is healthier because it looks more natural, but that's a bit of a misconception. Nutritionally, both white and brown sugar are almost identical. Brown sugar does contain a few trace minerals from the molasses, like calcium and potassium, but the amounts are so small that they don't really make a meaningful difference. At the end of the day, your body processes both exactly the same way. The difference is mostly about flavor and texture, not health. But beyond nutrition, sugar's transformation is still fascinating. Think about it. You start with a messy, earthy juice squeezed from a tropical grass. And after all that refining, you get something so pure, it sparkles. It's one of the oldest examples of large-scale purification in human history. The techniques developed for sugar refining laid the groundwork for other industries, chemistry, food preservation, even medicine. Of course, sugar's story isn't all sweet. It played a huge role in global trade, colonization, and slavery. Sugar plantations shaped economies and societies across the world, especially in the tropics. So that tiny spoonful of sugar in your coffee carries centuries of human history, both innovation and exploitation. But from a purely scientific standpoint, sugar's whiteness is simply a trick of the light. The whiteness doesn't come from adding something, it comes from removing everything else. We strip away the color, the molasses, the minerals, until nothing remains but the pure crystalline sweetness of sucrose. That's why sugar is white, even though sugarcane is brown. It's not about addition, it's about refinement. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.